Mount Hood Volcano of Oregon is just outside of Portland. The eruptive characteristics of the volcano analyzed. It's had two major eruptions in the past 1,500 years. And this month alone, it's had 42 earthquakes. We'll go into the details of this, but also the eruptive characteristics of Oregon's Mount Hood volcano, listed as one of the high threat volcanoes of the Cascades. This is by Oregon State University. This new study found that a mixing of two different types of magma is the key to the historic eruptions of Mount Hood. And you'll note that uh, that's exactly what happens when super eruptions take place. Uh, if you see the video just before this one, the trigger for explosive volcanoes, uh, that video has to do about the super eruption that took place about 700,000 years ago in the Canary Islands, Tenerife and the volcanic islands of the Canary Islands, where we now have La Palma erupting. So concerning Mount Hood, the behavior is somewhat different than most other Cascade Range volcanoes. The new study found that the mixing of the two different types of magma is a key to the historic eruption of Mount Hood, Oregon's tallest, uh, tallest mountain, and that the eruptions often happen in a relatively very short time, weeks or months after this mi mixing occurs. It's a different behavior than what other Cascade Range volcanoes have, including Mount Hood's nearby explosive neighbor, Mount St. Helens. Category red, Mount Hood is category yellow. And the research is being reported in Nature Geoscience by geologists from Oregon State University and University of California, Davis. The work supported by the National Science Foundation. It'll help scientists better understand the nature of Mount Hood's past and future eruptions, as well as other volcanoes that erupt by similar mechanisms. As we said, the super eruption 700,000 years ago in the Canary Islands, which is not listed as a super volcano site. Now, this includes a large number of the world's active volcanoes. These data will help give us a better roadmap to what a future eruption on Mount Hood will look like and what will take place before it occurs. This is what Adam Kent, an OSU Associate Professor of Geosciences said. It should also help us understand the nature of future eruptions and what risks they will entail. Mount Hood is 11,249 feet tall. It's the highest mountain in the Oregon and fourth highest in Cascade Range. The last major eruption was in the late 1780s, and the effects of this eruption were viewed by members of the Lewis and Clark expedition in 1805. It's considered potentially active and the Oregon volcano most likely to erupt, although the chances of that are still small. Geologists are already able to uh, use things like gas emissions and chemistry of hot springs, ground deformation, Finally, support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support, and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box. And ground deformation, as we said. Local earthquakes and other data to help predict when a volcanic eruption is imminent. Kent said, and the new findings were added to the data towards that goal. The two types of magma, or molten underground rock, are often involved in volcanic processes. Mathic magma, which is less silica and is more fluid, and felsic magma, which has a higher silica content and a thicker consistency like toothpaste. A third type of magma called andesite, named after the Andes Mountains, where it is often found, is composed of a mixture of both felsic and mafic magma. Andesite is common in volcanoes that form at subduction zones, regions where one tectonic plate is sinking below another, and include those that form around the well-known Pacific Ocean Rim of Fire. The rocks around Mount Hood, scientists say, are almost exclusively formed from andesitic magma, and research suggests that the recharge of mafic magma to mix with this thicker felsic counterpart often occurs just prior to an actual eruption. Kent said this, uh, the intense mixing of these two types of magma causes an increase in pressure, a 
and other effects and is usually the trigger for an eruption. But this process does not happen in all volcanic events. In the Cascade Range, Mount Hood appears to be one volcano where andesitic magma and recharge-driven eruptions are dominant. That may be because of local crustal conditions, Kent said. Even though the Cascade Range is linked to melting rock from the Cascade subduction, Cascadia subduction zone, some parts of the crust are more difficult than others for magma to move through. Mount Hood appears to be in a region where it takes an ex extra pressure of magma mixing to cause an eruption. Kent said that researchers study these processes not only to improve their ability to predict eruptions and to recognize precursors to eruptions, but also to assess possible ore deposits associated with volcanic activity and learn more about the fundamental dynamics of volcanic processes. This was from Oregon State University on fizz.org. Now let's go to Volcano Discovery. Also, we're going to go to, uh, to see what's happening on um, the Pacific Northwest chart as far as the events there at Mount Hood. Small summary from USGS. Mount Hood has erupted episodically for about 500,000 years and hosted two major eruptive periods during the past 1,500 years. During both recent eruptive periods, growing lava domes high on the southwest flank collapsed repeatedly to form pyroclastic flows and lahars that were distributed primarily to the south and west along the Sandy River and its tributaries. The last eruptive period began in uh, 1781 and affected the White River as well as Sandy River valleys. The Lewis and Clark expedition explored the mouth of Sandy River in 1805 and 6 and described a river much different from today's Sandy. At that time, the river was choked with sediment generated by erosion of the deposits from the eruption, which had stopped about a decade before their visit. In the mid-1800s, local residents reported minor explosive activity again, but since that time, the volcano has been quiet. And Mount Hood here, 11,100 feet to 240 feet in height, uh, current status normal one out of five. Last update, well, that's very late, very in June. That's a 3.9 earthquake. And uh, it's near Oregon, as we said, highest peak and one of the most prominent of the Cascade volcanoes. It's probably the only volcano in Oregon which has erupted in historic times. Last confirmed activity, 19, uh, 1865 to 66. Andesite, Dasat, Liva, from glacially eroded summit complex. The main hazard for Mount Hood are posed by pyroclastic flows and mud flows because it's, uh, it's tipped by uh, snow, as we know, in case of an eruption. And these would travel downstream riverbeds radiating from the volcano and threatening communities in the area. Flank failure and debris avalanche. Scientists also warn that due to heavy alteration of rocks by fumarolic and hydrothermal activity, large parts of the upper volcano edifice are structurally unstable and could be prone to massive slope failure. This would trigger catastrophic debris flows, such as what happened in Mount St. Helens in 1980, and have happened in Mount Hood's geologic past as well. More than 100,000 years ago, a large collapse produced a debris avalanche and lahar that traveled north down the Hood River Valley, crossing the Columbia River, and we'll see that on the map later, and smaller but si still sizable events like this repeated itself about uh, 1,500 years ago. The recent earthquakes, October 31st, 0 0.7, uh, five miles down. Uh, October 27, 2.4, 14 miles down. 25th, 1.1, 0 0.4, superficial earthquake. And uh, let's go now to our maps. This is Mount Hood right here. Uh, let's go to our topography. That's not Mount Hood. Where is it? Mount Hood is around here. Sorry. Let's go in. There we go. Mount Hood. I'm sorry. That's, it wasn't there. It's here. Right here. That's Mount Hood. You can see how close it is to Portland. It's about, I would say, what, 100 miles away. And this is the Columbia River right there. Columbia River. And if we pan out, you'll see how close it is to Yellowstone. Let's go to imagery. There's uh, That's Mount Hood right there. Portland and uh, Columbia River Plain, and uh, 
this is Idaho here. Look at the craters of the moon, lava flow right there. And this is the Hebgen Lake area, the Yellowstone Lake over the caldera right there. That's Yellowstone right there. Okay, this uh, Mount Hood right there, the Cascades. And let's go back. Topography. Okay. Mount Hood, there you go. And uh, it's got a pretty, pretty good uh, image of it. There it is right there. And the imagery of it. Look at that. There it is. Snow capped. And pulling out again. So that's Portland right there. And it would flow this way. Now going back, we can even see, I think we can even see the crater here. Okay, there we go. Very nice picture. Very nice high definition of it. Okay. Excellent view. And these are the uh, latest, some of the latest earthquakes. Okay, latest earthquakes right here, local time. And we can see them right here. November 3rd. These are the earthquakes. November 3rd, Mount Hood. November 2nd, 2.3, 2.2, 3.4, November 2nd. Okay. 2.4, November 2nd. What's this? 4.4. .4. Okay. Um, let's pull out again. Beautiful picture of Mount Hood. And there's the Coleman Glacier on top of that. Sandy Glacier, you have various glaciers there, okay, Sandy Glacier and Coleman Glacier and White River Glacier. So putting, pulling out again and going to the imagery, okay, those are the glaciers of course and that's why you get the pyroclastic flows and the lahar is running down and uh, it's happened towards, uh, in the past, towards Portland, what is today Portland. And let's go back a little bit. And this is the area of uh, Portland Mount Hood right there. And where are we? Okay. Oh, sorry. Okay, it pulled out again. Let's go back. <laughs> All right. And this is these are the Mount Hood earthquakes. Um, 42 earthquakes in the last month. Mount St. Helens to the north is about 27 earthquakes in the la last month. Mount Rainier, 23 earthquakes in the last month. Then you have Mount Baker is one, Crater Lake one, uh, Newbury one, and the Three Sisters one. Okay, so uh, this is the situation in the uh, area of Mount Hood. It has a lot of, uh, these earthquakes here uh, were about a couple of weeks, a couple of uh, 10 days or so ago, two weeks ago. They had something like 38 quakes um, in one day. So uh, all of you there, please be in around Portland. Please be very careful. You see you have a lot of earthquake activity. Thank you for your support. Please leave your comments. Thank you.